Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the XYZ Game Labs series Quacks Games. Uh, in this set of games here, we have three, and they all play very differently. We'll talk about all three of them in this review and give a broad overview of how they are played, followed by my review. The first one we'll talk about is going to be called Zoo Year's Eve, which is kind of a bluffing game in which you'll have a certain number of animals that you're trying to get into the New Year's Eve party at the zoo by crashing the party. Party. If you can get all of your animals in first, you'll succeed, but everybody else wants to get in as well, and if you're tricking them and you're not actually who you say you are, maybe you're not on the guest list, which I guess nobody technically is, uh, then you're going to have to draw more animals and progress in. The next game is Cultivate, and Cultivate is a 1-4 to four player game with a solo mode, 8 and up, takes about 20 minutes, and that game is all about cultivating a garden. You'll be drawing cards, you'll be utilizing things like, oh, a watering can, or bugs, or of course the garden gnome attempting to score points by placing down cards on top of other cards, opening up your garden and scoring bonus points based on how you develop your garden with specific rules as to how you place. When the deck runs out, you'll check your garden, add up your score, and whoever has the most points is the winner. And finally, we'll take a look at Bait and Switch. Bait and Switch is kind of a traitor slash deduction game with a little bit of the prisoner's dilemma added to it. You're basically going to be setting down teams and attempting to uh, forego your team into the mission to score as many points as you possibly can. You can tell the truth or lie in the game. Deception is key, but sometimes being honest does help. Afterwards, you'll set your team's color, whether you're the good guys or the bad guys, and then based on your teams, you'll score additional points through the game. You'll reset the teams, reshuffle them up, and begin again, and after a certain number of rounds, whoever has the most points based on who joined your team, whether you had the leaders on your team, and of course what team you chose, you'll get some points there, and the most after those rounds will be the winner of the game. Three nice games that play roughly mm, about 20-25 minutes apiece. They're all anywhere between two and six players, some of them have a solo mission, and they're of course all family friendly. Let's go take a look at down below. I'll show you what comes in the game, how it is played, or they are played, I should say, and then I'm going to review each of them individually, and you can decide whether you want to pick up this series of games by XYZ Game Labs. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the three games that I have here, Zoo Year's Eve, Cultivate, and uh, Bait and Switch. This one here in the middle is Zoo Year's Eve, and what it's going to come with is the cards you see here, this little tuck folder here, which is basically like a wallet that you can stick in your pocket when you're done. Um, and of course, the rules for the game. To begin the game, you're basically just going to go ahead and shuffle all of these cards and then deal out cards to each player is equal to whatever it says on in the rule book. In the rule book, it'll tell you, like, for instance, a two player game will play seven cards, a three player game will play five, five or more will play three cards. And your objective in this game is to empty your hand of cards. You are animals and you are basically crashing a party at the zoo. So you can have things like giraffes and monkeys and penguins and each of these guys have unique rules to them like for instance when you play the draft down you'll get to draw two cards and discard one or monkeys need to be paid, played in pairs they're the only ones that do that penguins are pretty much neutral they don't do much of anything and then you have special ones like for instance you're going to have something like a snake here and of course you're also going to have the lion these guys will come into play even when they're not your turn and your guest list these are where you're going to deal to each of the players is going to inform you of what the different characters do. On your turn, you're simply going to be choosing a card or cards, placing them down, and then claiming what they are. So for instance, I can go, oh, I've got two monkeys here. And players will be like, I believe you, or I don't believe you. If they believe you, you'll go ahead and discard these guys, two cards out of your hand. If they don't believe you, you'll reveal them. And if you are telling the truth, uh, then you are going to be making them draw a card and these guys are going to go away. If you're lying, you don't reveal them after they call you out and you return them to your hand and you will draw an extra card. <laughs> That's not good. So you don't want to be caught out in a lie when you are lying. And after you place a card or cards down, based on if they're monkeys or not, then you're going to pass your turn, and the next player is going to get a chance to go to place a card down, and uh, it will continue like that. Now, the unique things in the game, like I said, are things like the lion, in which case you're basically going to be playing that card, the snake or the lion, I should say, and uh, when somebody else plays another card. So for instance, if you don't know if they're telling the truth or not, you can simply play the lion and stop them. Or with the snake, you can go ahead and play this and both of you will draw new cards and discards the ones that you played. The snake, for instance, and maybe one of the cards that they played. But regardless, it's pretty straightforward. Going back and forth, playing cards, attempting to get rid of all the cards in your hand. And if you can do so first, you win the game of Zoo Year's Eve. 
This is bait and switch. Bait and switch is a little more complex in style or in nature. There's different things you're going to be giving to players that are going to be starting or the professionals in the game. Maybe you'll deal one to somebody, one to somebody else. And then you're also going to deal out one of these cards to each player. These are like your secret roll cards and how they work is pretty simple. You're going to have the different types of players that you could be. For instance, you have a brawler and an insider, or you have two insiders, and then you also have a color, which is your team color. And how it works is you're going to be, first of all, playing cards face down, attempting to enact these specific requirements. Like you need a hacker, insider, and a brawler for this team. Place them down and make sure that the card that you're playing is placing inside or towards the center. That will illustrate what character you're utilizing and what color. After you reveal that, basically it will turn you into teams, and the teams will be based on color. And then you're going to once again reveal colors, and of course, you'll do the prisoner's dilemma. If, for instance, you're all blue, you'll all share the loot. If one is red, he'll take all of it. If more than one is red, then only the blue players will get something. And so you're trying to decide, is it better to try and mess with my opponents, or, or I should say mess with my Co cohorts and attempts to get more money or should I work together to get as much as I possibly can. Each round is followed by point scoring. You'll choose a specific type of round that it's going to be based on the, the item that you're utilizing. You'll shuffle these guys up. You'll deal out new specific character cards or roll cards after you shuffle them and then you're going to return these, shuffle them up and deal them out again and keep going for four rounds. Whoever has the most points is the winner at the end of the game and of course don't forget that not only do you score points for what team you're on, how many players are on your team but also uh if these guys these special guys uh professionals are on your team as well and that's pretty much the idea of the game there's a little bit more intrinsic aspects or like details but for the most part i think you understand how it plays uh this one over here is cultivate cultivate is probably the most complex game of the bunch in which you're going to be shuffling this deck dealing out three cards into a pool setting aside these solo mode cards if you're not utilizing them and dealing out two of these cultivate objective cards to each player go ahead and place this board down the deck over here and and of course the items in each of the little stacks and they're indicated based on the, in the name over here. On your turn, you're gonna be dealt three cards, three cultivate cards from the deck. You'll choose one and place it out on the field and then you'll have two left over. And when your turn begins, you're going to basically be, do, be doing two actions. Action one, choose one of these guys. Action two, playing a card from your hand. And option three is discarding a card worth three points or three symbols in the top left hand corner to gather one of these tokens that will then allow you to place it on a card. Very, very useful in fact. Uh, and the game will keep going like that. After you take your two actions, the next player is gonna take their two, so on and so forth until this deck runs out. When, uh, when the last card from this pool has been chosen, the round will end and players will score points. And how you score points is based on how you make your garden. So when you choose to play a card, you can never play one over a insect and you always are trying to connect your garden spaces. If you can connect three or more of the same symbol with three different cards, or three different symbols I should say, you'll score a bonus point for each card that it's attached to, and you can do that multiple times. Whenever you're placing, you can place under, you can place over, and of course connecting your garden pieces is very important, so that would score you bonus points at the end of the game. You have one, two, three, four, five green all attached to these three cards, meaning that you would score one point for each symbol on the card at the end of the game, plus a bonus point if you have three connecting cards of the same color, minus points for each of the insects. Oh, actually, you do actually stack. Uh, you do try and cover the insects. You're, yeah, you wanna try and cover them so you don't lose the points. So you can also go ahead and utilize your special actions. These guys, when you put on a card, it will block, it'll kill all the insects on the card. Um, and uh, these guys here will allow you to place extra cards down. They all actually gonna have some type of benefit to them when you play them. Um, and that's basically the idea of the game. When these run into a player's hand, you're gonna be going to be going refreshing and then it'll be the next player's turn. Whenever you want to buy these, like I said, you're going to need to spend a certain number of points, which is three. You can do it with more than one card if you want. So for instance, these two cards here have a point total of one plus two, which is three. You can discard these guys, gather one of these and place it on your card. And that's the basic idea of the game, trying to cultivate your garden, trying to collect uh, pieces and place them together to make sure that they kind of all fit and making sure they look nice with the basic placing rules attached to them. Uh, and you have to actually cover fully on certain cards, but you can't cover the flowers. So there's certain rules as to how it all works. And if you can gather the most points at the end of the game, you uh, win. It's pretty straightforward with three specific actions and a ton of choices when it comes to building your garden. All right, 
let's come up and review it. So the first up on the docket is the game Zoo Year's Eve, which literally is just come, gonna come with a small pack. Uh, of course, the, it's like kind of like a foldable bill style wallet with a deck of cards. These cards are going to pertain animals and the animals are attempting to get into the zoo. It's a really, really great theme and works perfectly for this game. It kind of reminds me of the game Coup because you'll attempt to call out certain animals. People will decide if you're lying, you're telling the truth. Some animals have requirements to get into the party and others can just kind of crash them. So for instance, like there's a snake and then you have like the, the tiger. Those guys are going to be kind of mean, uh, but you can always lie. So any ability that you have access to in the deck, you have access to in your hand. But if you lie and you get caught, you're in trouble. If you don't get caught and you're lying, you succeed. And if you tell the truth, the opposite happens. Uh, if you are called a liar, they're going to suffer. And if they're told, told the truth, then you just get your animal across that you need to get across. Emptying your hand is the most important aspect of the game, and it does a great, a great job of that. The game plays quick. You want to play more than one of this game. This is definitely a filler game, but it's one that you can easily spend the entire night playing. If you like Coup and games like Coup, this is one I would suggest playing with a more family-friendly theme and a simpler concept, but yet still enough strategy to keep the game going on for the entire time you want to play it. The next game up on the docket is Cultivate, a game where you're primarily trying to build a garden. You'll have a certain number of cards in your hand, a starting garden card, and of course the way to get items in the game is fairly simple. Three actions on your turn. Place a card, draw a card from the pile or the available shop, or of course spend cards from your hand to gather those unique tokens you'll need to place in your cards to perform their actions. This game is all about placement. How you place your cards, where you place them, and when you place them. Cards have more value, harder to place. Cards with less value, easier to place. Place. There is a little bit of co competition in the game, of course, where if you want a card specifically and somebody else does, then they might get it before you. But overall, it's all about self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and of course, gathering the cards you need the most in order to succeed. Artwork is beautiful. Game is very straightforward, very easy to understand how to play, with a wide variety of combinations where every single time you make a garden, it will always be different. And of course, how you place is so important. You can't place over certain things like insects. And of course, trying to finagle the correct location on how you make those card placements work to make your garden look good and connect to all the possible the possibilities, I suppose, that you're going to need in the game, allowing you to score bonus points for every single card you have. And of course, there's a solo mode in this game as well, which is a lot of fun, but in my opinion, it works best with two or more players. I just generally like the more the competitive style games like these to have that. But however, if you are one of those people who enjoy solo mode games, this one will have it. And if you like the gameplay, it is solid and it feels just like you're playing against other players. And of course, the next one, Bait and Switch. Bait and Switch is a little bit of a prisoner's dilemma type thing where are you going to try and uh, forego your friend to the police or are you going to work together and say nothing? That type of thing. You're going to have a certain number of uh, cards out in the field that are the types of cards or characters you're going to need in order to complete the mission. You all put down the characters that you choose, flip them over, and then you'll have your teams based on the color, scoring points and putting yourself into teams. Uh, when you're going to then go ahead and select the good or the bad, side and it's going to have a certain number of rounds and as you go throughout the rounds you will score points based on the leaders that join your party and of course the people who are uh, working with you uh, and and what you played down based on what is required and you kind of have to lie sometimes you might have to say you have a certain thing to get people to want to join you on your team and uh, other times you might want to just tell the truth because it might be in your best interest it's really about making sure that it's all about what you want to do it's somewhat traitory but it's more kind of social has a bit of deduction aspects into it. And every round, it switches up the different types of teams that are going to be required based on the number of players, how many points you want to get, and how many people you can get on your team. The more people, obviously, the more points. And of course, those leaders are very, very valuable, and they do switch every round. All of these games play very differently. If you want a game that's a little more family-friendly, more straightforward tile placement or card placement, cultivates the one for you. Zoo Year's Eve is a light, coup-like game with a unique theme that I really enjoy joy and a nice twist to the classical card game that I have in my collection. This one will stay in there as well and something I'll probably bring out more than Coup just because it's even easier to set up and even easier to carry. It's literally a wallet sized billfold that you can play anytime you want in your back pocket. And then of course bait and switch. For those of you who like that prisoner's dilemma type thing, you want something that's got a little bit more in it other than just that where it has revealing, it has teams, you're going to be switching, it's very very social. This one is solid as well. 
favorite artwork, Cultivate, followed up by Zoo Year's Eve, and then of course, Bait and Switch. All the cards are high quality, all the games are nice. There are all, they all, all are prototypes, I believe, except for New Zoo Year's Eve. So expect different changes as the game progresses, or yeah, through pro production, of course. But overall, this set of, of games, this series of games, is probably my favorite series of games I have yet to play. I think they all work very well. I can easily play each one in any order for any number of players that can possibly play the games. And of course, I think everyone will enjoy them. My favorite game among all three of them is probably gonna be Zoo Year's Eve, just because of the light friendly, like simple, straightforward rule set, followed very closely by Cultivate because I love designing things and putting things together. And this does a great job for just being a deck of cards. And of course, Bait and Switch. Bait and Switch probably be my least favorite, but don't count it out. It is a fun game. I do love trader games. I do love hate and roll games and games that involve some type of social dilemma. And it does exactly what you'd expect it to do, what you'd want it to do. I'd probably like to see a little bit better artwork in my opinion. Um, and I would also like to see what it looks like when it's fully finished, but we still Still had a ton of fun playing this game. My cousin enjoyed that one more than all the rest of the game. So if you're a big trader deduction type player, this one's going to be a solid one for your collection because it's probably one of the smaller ones that I've actually seen and does a good job of making it feel like you are attempting to lie, not once, but twice every single round. And they're very straightforward, very simple, and, um, complex in thought, but not in process. Regardless though, let me know what you guys think down below in the description. Is it a game you'd want to pick up? Which one among the three is going to be something you guys are going to most likely enjoy. I believe they're all going to come in a set of three games, and this is not a bad set to get. Like I said, this is my favorite set of small games, and it does an excellent job at what they do. So do think about choosing to pick them up. If you have any questions, I'll try and answer them down below as well. Thank you guys. Now it is time for my outro. News time. All right, guys, thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the games Cultivate, Bait and Switch, and Zoo Year's Eve by XY Game, XYZ Game Labs. If you want to pick up any of these guys, like I said, down below, link in the description will be up for the Kickstarter when it is available to you. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Our Discord, our Patreon members, go ahead and join us if you like. For a buck, it does greatly help us out. We do greatly appreciate it. Helps us put out streams every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST on YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. Watch us play games literally just like these ones. And in fact, we might actually play these games on our next stream because they just work really well. They're very straightforward, very simple. And I think people will get a quick, instant understanding of how they play. It's also a good way for you guys to see in a full played experience, not just take my word for it. All right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I look forward to not going to jail with you next time, apparently. Oh, that's, that's really close. I gotta go.